Now that we've seen what happens when we draw small samples, that is samples of size 2, from a normal population, let's see what happens when we draw larger size samples, but not just from a normal population, but also from populations that are non-normal. Remember, one of the main reasons we're doing this is to understand under what conditions we can expect the sampling distribution of the mean to be normal, because if the sampling distribution of the mean is normal, that gives us a lot of tools to understand the proportionality of the distributions. In the journal that accompanies this module, click the Sampling Distributions 3 Populations link, which will launch a data set from which we draw from a normal population, a uniform population, and something called a beta population. The uniform and beta will not have a normal shape, and so what we can observe is how the distribution of sample means tends to resemble the normal distribution under certain conditions. Now, I'll caution you, the sampling distribution of the mean will not always be normally distributed. Our purpose here is to see when it will be, so that when we're doing real science, we can be sure that we know and can assert that the sampling distribution is normally distributed. To start this simulation, I'm going to right-click on the sample number column and go to column info. And what I'm going to do is initialize this column with numbers. I want to keep track of which sample we're taking. So I'm going to go under Initialize Data, and I'm going to initialize with a sequence. I'm going to tell Jump I want it to count from 1 to 100,000. So I'll just add three zeros to the end of the 2. When I click OK, Jump will add those values into the sample number. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see we do get to 100,000. And so far, we don't have any other columns. The rest of the columns in this data set are hidden. Let's start with the normal population, and I'll tell you, I'm not going to take you through this entire demonstration. I want you to play with the sampling distribution data set a little bit on your own later. But I want to tell you about the insights we get from the sampling distribution demo. So first, let's expand the normal population section, and you'll see that we have a number of different columns we can reveal. Each of these columns will take samples of different sizes. Now let me first right-click on the normal n equals 1 column and go to the formula. The formula here will resemble what we've seen before. It's going to be taking the mean of a simple process, just one draw from a random normal distribution multiplied by 15, so the unit normal distribution multiplied by 15, plus 100. Again, this will return a value that has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. The reason I have mean here is just for consistency with the rest of the columns. Let's look at what I do with the other columns. Let's go down to a normal with n equals 2. This replicates what we saw in the previous example, but I want to show you how the formula is different, because this time, each column is actually going to compute the sample itself. So the column n equals 2 will actually take the mean of two random draws, just like we did with the binomial, in this function, it's actually taking two independent random draws from a unit normal distribution and multiplying it by 15 and adding 100. That is, converting that z-score back to a raw score. So, this normal n equals 2 column is really doing the same thing as we did before, but now we're able to do it in a single column. So, let's actually look at some of these distributions. I'm going to right-click on n equals 3 and unhide this column. When I do this, we'll actually get to the column that shows us, for samples of size 3 this time, what types of sample means we get. And just so we can see a number of them at once, let me actually unhide all of these columns. I'll select them and select Hide Unhide. Now, for every row in our data set, we're having samples of n equals 3 from a normal, 4, 16, 64, and all the way up to 100. Let's look at these distributions. I'll go to Analyze select distribution, and I'll select all of them. I'm actually going to start with 1 and go all the way down to 100. Now just to keep things clear, I'm going to select histograms only. We'll actually look in PowerPoint at these distributions a little more carefully, but for now, let's just look at the histograms. When I click OK, Jump will launch the distribution platform with each of these distributions. Now for this simulation, let me actually go to the red triangle. I'm going to stack these observations. I'm going to hold down the Command key. This will broadcast that command and I'm going to drag out the distribution all the way to the right so we can actually see it a little more clearly. Now I'm going to do one more thing. Remember, these distributions are going to be different in terms of their spread. As we get larger sample sizes, remember it's harder and harder to get extreme sample means. 
So I'm going to go back to the red triangle and select Uniform Scaling. Now again, to make these distributions not look ridiculous, let me get the grabber and I'm going to drag up in each of these distributions, which will actually change the bin sizes to be something reasonable. So let me scroll down and keep dragging these up. You could probably already see what's happening here, but let's actually step back and work through these iteratively. So first, the distribution with n equals 1 is really just our population. If we take samples of size 1 from the population, we're simply recreating the population distribution. Think about what a sample of size 1 is. It's just one person. So if we take a sample of size 1 from the population and plot it, and repeat that 100,000 times, well, we've just grabbed 100,000 people from the population. With n equals 2, this is what we saw before. That is, we've drawn in the distribution just a little bit. It's harder to get extreme observations in the tails. Remember why? It's unlikely. It's just an unlikely sampling event that for both of the observations, we would get somebody extreme on either side. Now let me just scroll down quickly, and you're going to see that very quickly, these sampling distributions are drawn in. By the time we get to samples of size 100, it becomes incredibly unlikely for us to get sample means that are even beyond 110. In fact, very rarely did we get ones that are 10 or more units of sampling error. So these distributions are reducing in their standard deviation. That is, we've actually reduced the likelihood of getting extreme means by simply adding more individuals to our sample. You might remember, this is the consistency of the sample statistic. That is the consistency of the estimator x bar. As we add more observations to our sample mean, our sample mean is more likely to be close to the population mean.